Gwe gwe gano waga rono, wat gano rado, runya gai de urjat snegi, the gano waga COVID-19 task force daily briefing. You know, Lisa Westaway and Lloyd Phillips, the executive director of the Cattery Hospital and the public safety commissioner, uh, have a difficult task. They have to be the spokespersons on behalf of the Gunawagi Task Force. The task force itself has a difficult task. They have to make decisions on behalf of the entire community, decisions which don't always please everybody. Uh, our only guest today uh, is no stranger to that, uh, has nearly 30 years experience working at the hospital, and over the last 10 years has been an elected council member. Please welcome Redzahayas Clinton Phillips. Thank you, Neil, for, for that. Uh, hi, folks from uh, Ganwage and those watching from far away, as far as I know, uh, even in the Philippines. Uh, hi, Bell. Hope you're being well. Uh, I just thought it was time for me to come on. Uh, as everybody knows, the task force is not a political entity, and I think it's important for every now and then for the political body of Ganawage to show its face and lend support to uh, what's happening uh, with the COVID task force. You know, I don't think anybody uh, wanted to be a part of this committee going back to January, February, and maybe even the first week of March. Nobody thought we would be in the position we are in, not just Kahnawake, but the globe itself. You know, this is really uncharted waters. We are sailing at night with no lights and no sail. So, I mean, you know, things happen. Things happen in a very quick manner. Things are being based on predict predictions and watching trends that had transformed, whether it be in Asia, in Europe, in the United States, uh, and in Canada as well. So our experts that form the task force are doing their darndest, in my opinion, and, uh, and I believe in council's opinion as well, uh, to do the best for what's, uh, for, for what's best in Ganawage. Um, our team is lined up with a bunch of experts in their fields. They know what they're doing, but again, you know, I can wager that none of them, you know, applied for this job uh, to be on a task force and to, you know, look at what's happening across the world and come to conclusions and recommendations for the safety of our people and the safety of Ganawage. I don't envy them one bit. It's a job that I would not want to have to take on and still have the burden of everything else that they have to do in their regular job. So I just wanted to, to discuss something uh, of that nature about supporting the task force and the recommendations and the decisions that they make based on scientific fact and trends trending across the globe. You know, it, it's, it's very scary right now if you watch different uh, American, especially I watch a lot of American news and what you're hearing happen uh, you know, in New York City, what's happening in Florida now, what's happening in California, what's happening, you know, in Asia, it's disturbing because the world has never seen something like this and how quickly it, it infected the whole globe is, is somewhat scary. And we in Ganawage, when we created the task force, our job was to minimize the impact on, on Ganawage Hironu and of course, the healthcare system itself. Uh, recently, I was at the Royal Vic Hospital, and let me tell you, COVID is alive and well over there. Uh, I was informed by one of the physicians there that one of the hallways that I was in uh, happened to be loaded with stretchers that were COVID positive, and to hear these people cough and the amount of pain they were in was scary, to say the least. I think a lot of people in Ganawage have, you know, whether it be on Facebook or different types of chats that are going on in the community and gossip, if you will, uh, a lot of people think that, you know, this is, people are making too big of a hype of this and that it's not really as bad as it, we are making it out to be. And I'm sorry to inform you that is wrong. This is scary. This is dangerous. And for a large degree, it is somewhat, um, at this point, uh, worrisome. It hits, I think when it hits you close to home, I think you really change your mind or, you know, with me and my family, you know, recently my niece, uh, um, my beautiful niece was diagnosed COVID-19 positive and uh, she's fully recovered now and she did tell her story to Ganawage Rono a couple weeks ago uh, via th this, uh, this outlet as well. And she told her story, but as a family member to her, 
you have no idea what those 16 days w were like for my family, for my sister, her mother, for my mother and father, for my siblings, you know, worrying every single day, every single night, is she gonna be okay? And did her children get infected from this disease? So when it hits you, when it hits home to you, you tend to look at it in a very different light. I do see people talking on Facebook and saying, oh, I'm, I'm dying to go shopping in Plattsburgh. Oh, I'm, I wanna go to, I just wanna, I just want to go to the movies and resume life the way it was. Everybody wants to resume life the way it was. Are we going to be able to do that anytime soon? I don't know. It doesn't look like it's going to happen within a week or two. So I, I don't know. You know, and I think before people start, you know, I, I put a post on Facebook myself saying that people are crying uh, to go shopping and they're crying because they can't go to their favorite restaurant and sit down for two or three hours. But then look at the other side of that coin. We have people in the community who are crying because they can't properly bury their dead. We've had several people pass away in the community since the beginning of COVID-19. There's been no wakes. There's been no f gatherings of funerals. There's been no 10-day feast to the degree that people have been, become accustomed to. You know, there's a lot of things that people really should and are crying about shopping and going to a movie or going out to dine is not something to cry about. So I guess today I'm just asking the community to really look at the decisions that are made by the task force. Like I said earlier, they're, they're apolitical. That's not what they're there for. They're there to protect all of us, to protect the community. You know, um, we are re-examining decisions such as uh, the, the opening of, uh, of uh, retail in the community which happened last week and I think with that I'm hoping that the decision makers and the different organizations that do sit at the task force will re-examine some of the other things that may have been stopped and or um, not being promoted something you know something is is uh, easy as uh, visiting the elders at the elders lodge I know via Facebook and people approaching me is a very big issue about not being able to go visit your grandmother or your mother or father or your your, your auntie who's living in the in the the elders lodge or at Cattery Hospital you know decisions were made and I think maybe if the decision makers would re-examine because we are such a close-knit family and our grandparents and our aunties and uncles and our cousins, you know, are part of our family. We're not, we don't, we don't, in Kanawagi, we don't say it's our extended family. They are our family, period. And we need our family and it's part of our roles and responsibility as Ungwe Hume to look out for every single member of this community, whether they're our, uh, our elders who we treasure, whether it be um, a, a distant cousin, we are all of the same families and we need to take care of, of each other. So I just ask that decisions that were made, if they could possibly be reconsidered and you know, with, uh, with help from people who want to help and make uh, events possible for our elder po population, you know, I know I will volunteer my time to help if issues of distancing is, is a problem between people who are congregating, then I'll be there to help ensure that people maintain uh, two meters from each other for everyone's safety. So I think decisions are made every single day, whether you're a parent, you know, making a decision with your children, I can guarantee you many of your decisions, your, your, your own children will not agree with you as being what they think is in, the, in their best interest. But that's what life is, right? It, whatever your job is, whatever your workplace is, decisions are made, whether it be by you or your supervisor, and you, and you have to toe the line until you know, another decision comes along and changes that. So my voice to you today is to be patient with everyone, to acknowledge the fact that we are doing the very best that we can in a terrible, terrible situation. And again, nobody asked for this. And I want Kanoaga Ronu to, to know for a fact that just about all of Quebec and very much a large part of Canada is looking right here, is looking at Kanoaga. What we do, how we do it, and why we do it, and who we're doing it for. People are congratulating Kanoaga on, 
our efforts, you know, what, what, we're, what we're doing, and, you know, I, I can go on and on and on. The simple fact is, again, Ganawage is at the front of everything. Again, Ganawage is the example across Canada on how to do something right. And that, at the end of the day, I think is something that Ganawage should be extremely proud of. I know I am. And with that, I thank you for your time. I thank you for listening. And I bid you a good day. Nyawa. Redzahayas Clinton Phillips. Nyawa Goa. I think what Clinton's, this, this is actually a really good um, demonstration of the task force and how it's not a political entity. Uh, Clinton's an elected official. And he just talked about having the task force asking them to re-examine their decision. Yet at the same time, he's respecting their decisions. And this goes to show you that it's not being pushed or driven by the council at all. It is a non-political entity, as he mentioned. I mean, if you look at other task, force, uh, task forces, you know, you look in Canada, you see Justin Trudeau, he's the face of it. Uh, Legault, he's the face of Quebec. Here, it's, it's, uh, it's two people who are not part of the MCK. They're, I mean, Lloyd Phillips has a somewhat arm's length role, but they're, they're not part of the MCK um, as elected officials. So I think for that, it's a, it's a good demonstration of how this is set up. Um, for on a smaller level, you may want to look at it as a, you know, running a store. You, know, you have a store manager, people don't necessarily want to work on Saturdays, but it's part, it's, a, it's part of a business and a decision that has to be made, it's not going to please everybody. Uh, things like that. So uh, I just want to get that point out before we get to our next subject and our final subject for the day. We have a new blood test procedures. You'll recognize the person on the video. So if you have to go to the house, ho Cattery Hospital and get a blood test, you'll be interested in this video as far as the new procedures. Take it away. During the pandemic, we had to adapt to the situation for um, each department, but for the lab specifically, what we're doing from start to finish is uh, it's all by appointment now. So you are calling into the lab secretary from 6.30 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. Uh, Monday to Friday, and you're booking your appointment uh, for your blood tests. Um, the requisitions usually are left here for you. If you have some, you are to bring the requisitions in along with two identifications, uh, the hospital card and your Medicare card. Um, we are actually asking the questions, um, the COVID, necessary COVID questions um, on the phone when you're booking your appointment, but you're also being screened uh, by security upon arrival. Uh, they're going to be asking you a series of questions just like they do um, for every other appointment and you answer of course um, honestly. You're going to be going to the third wicket where our blood lab secretary is going to be um, servicing you at that moment so you are to take out your cards and she's going to double identify you of course. Um, she's going to be updating any information also um, where your contact information is concerned, your telephone and address. Um, from there she's going to, if you have your requisition on you or if it's with her, she's going to be ordering your, your tests. She's going to be giving you back your requisition paper as well as the labels for the tests you're getting done. And she's going to ask you to take a seat and the lab nurse is going to be giving you, um, going to be calling you right afterwards. The lab nurse is actually wiping down the chair and all necessary equipment um, right after and in between each patient. She's wearing a mask uh, with each patient. Um, and she's, of course, keeping her distance as much as she can. Our lab secretary is also cleaning her area and um, asking the patients to wash their hands when they sit down. Uh, she's not physically touching the card. She's wiping down the area and surfaces, and we, our housekeeping staff is right behind her. We are accepting all Ganawage Ronu for blood tests um, at this moment. Uh, during this pandemic and we're asking all of the non-community members who use our services if they could just access their local CLSCs during this time for their blood tests. 
when they call in for an appointment, they're giving a specific time to come in. Uh, we are asking at, that they respect the time. Um, they don't come in any earlier or, or they don't come in later. Um, they might be refused if we are already backed up and that's because at this time we are trying to limit traffic in Cattery. The number to call if you want to book an appointment for the blood lab is 450-638-3930 and it's extension 2304 and it's our lab secretary and that's between 6.30 a.m. and 2.30 p.m. Monday to Friday. For that, so those who need a blood test uh, anytime in the near future, pay attention to those new measures. Um, just a couple of notes before we sign off for the day. We had a, the post of the actual broadcast yesterday uh, was posted accidentally as a, a position, a new job position for an executive director. So what happens is sometimes Facebook has this ag algorithm where you see the word executive director and it automatically assumes you're posting a job. And so that's how, how it was kind of put. We accidentally pressed yes and it went out like that. We have since changed it. Uh, there isn't a job posting right now. There's a, the, the, the executive director was a mention of uh, Natalie Bovo, who was one of our guests. So we apologize for that. Um, there was a message coming to the task force about delivery persons um, coming into the territory for different things and not respecting social distancing and different things. Um, the task force uh, on occasion will call the company, but really it's, it's, uh, it's your prerogative. If it's, people are coming in your home, it's up to you as a, an individual just to tell them to keep their distance. It's, it's your, definitely your right to ask them to keep that two meters and um, also to, if they need to wear a mask, if they have to get within um, two meters of you. Uh, so that's all up to you to say that. But if you do have uh, situations and you want to report them to the task force, you may. Um, they are flooded with calls and emails, but you know they'll, they'll help as much as you can. In this case, they did put in a call to the manager. The manager took care of it. So um, it just goes to show uh, it's a cooperation thing as well. Uh, the last thing, uh, we'll be back tomorrow. Monday is usually a busy day here in the task force uh, after the weekends. And uh, we thank you all for coming, uh, to, for coming out today. And I know it's uh, Sunday and you're enjoying yourself. But we, we look forward to seeing you again tomorrow. And with that, I bid you a good day. Yeah.